Hello there, my name is Charles Suvaswan Sipa. Welcome to another presentation on uh, complex functions in particular. This presentation, we are going to introduce complex power series. We remember in our earlier course in mathematics, we discussed the power series of uh, real value. Uh, functions of real variables which uh, were given by this expression and um, what was important then was to highlight the usefulness of such expressions in the sense that these functions if, uh, differential functions we've got infinite derivatives can be expressed in, in the form of uh, polynomials in this case with infinite terms, in this case, that's why we say they are series. Advantage here is that uh, in, in such expressions, functions are easy to evaluate, they are easy to differentiate, like differentiating as a polynomial using power rule, and they are also easy to integrate. Now, in our context of for complex functions, the situation changes slightly because here x was a, a real variable and also the coefficients a n were also real numbers. Coming to the complex situation, this series will adopt the form f of z equals to a n to the power z and here z will be a complex uh, variable and also the coefficients a n in here can be real or complex numbers. Then we also can also have uh, the same series, uh, this type of series expressed in the following manner. And we are having a summation a n multiply by z minus z0, z0 here uh, defines what you can call the center of development of the power series. So we say this power series is centered or is developed around z0 and uh, the uh, coefficients here again they are complex or, or real numbers. Now, coming to a kind of an example, we've got a, a power series here which we consider to be a geometric series. And uh, recall that also uh, discussing this uh, geometric series, we looked at issues of convergence or divergence. Discussing the issues of convergence and divergence, we saw that uh, the partial sum of a geometric series was given by this expression, and actually the convergence of such a series were, was dependent on the absolute value of uh, z. What we see in this expression is that if the absolute value of z is less than 1 and the n is growing towards infinity or tends to infinity, the absolute value of z to the power n will actually tend towards 0, which means as n is growing, this part of the series is actually negligible. In this case, the this expression will reduce to 1 over 1 minus z. I repeat that this expression, this expression reduces to that due to the fact that as n is increasing here, these powers of absolute value of z to the power n are going to shrink towards 0, therefore becoming negligible, and then the dominant part of this expression becomes that. And this is actually what we end up calling the sum of a geometric series of this nature. So we'd write, in the case it's convergent, we would say 
z you know, summation of z to the power n from n equal to 0 to infinity is equals to 1 over 1 minus z 0 z sorry over 1 minus z so in the in the case that uh, uh, z the absolute value of z is less than 1 and that this expression reduces that we would say that this series is convergent and then we would write that the summation from of z uh, uh, summation of z to the power n is equals to 1 over 1 minus z and then we call this the sum of geometric series and because it's convergent we would uh, even, uh, express this by saying z the summation of for z to the power n from n equals to 1 to infinity is less than infinity meaning is finite or approximately equal to an approximate value which means that the series is convergent but on the other hand if the absolute value of z is greater than 1 then the expression absolute value of z to the power n will grow indefinitely towards the infinity then the series given would be said to be to be to be divergent and in this case to represent uh, this situation uh, uh, geometrically would have the, the following so we have a here a unit section centered at the origin which is implied by this kind of condition we are saying the absolute value of z0 is less than 1 so on the circumference the radius is 1 so we can label here 1 minus 1 our imaginary unit there minus i there then this tells us that within this circle the unit circle the series will be convergent and outside that which is expressed by this condition the series will, will be divergent now um, the number r equals to 1 in this case is going to be called the radius of convergence that will be the radius of convergence now coming to a general case where a series is given by a n to the power z the given formula here defines the radius of convergence I hope you can see what happened here you take the absolute value of two successive terms in this way the first term over the next term and the calculating limit you get the radius of convergence and what we're going to have here about this series is that if the absolute value of z is less than r the series will be convergent otherwise if the absolute value of z is greater than r then this series will be called divergent actually convergence and divergence should be understood in the sense that when you're talking about convergence you are saying that the infinite sum is approximately equal to finite number or is equal to a finite number in the case of divergent the sum would be growing indefinitely towards infinity 
So as written here, the, the center of convergence would be z0 equals to, to 0. But you can also have uh, the expression given in form of z minus z0, like we saw the series can come in these parts of this expression. So when we've got this kind of a situation, we would say the series is centered at z0 different from 0. And then we should, in this case, be able to represent the situation diagrammatically represented by this equality. In this case, we would say on a complex plane, pick a particular point z0, then consider a circle of radius r and then the message will be within the circle if this is the case the series is convergent or otherwise outside the circle the series will be divergent apart from considering series centered at zero or, or another point different from zero on the complex plane. Sometimes you can also consider that the series is centered at infinity. In this case, a power series centered at infinity, will consider z zero is called infinity, will come in this form where it's going to come with coefficients a n, but the powers of z are, are all negative. This would be a situation which expresses, which tells us that the series is um, centered at infinity. Now, summarizing, we've seen that series, this power series can come in the following form. Let's say we've got um, a n z to the power n. And we say here the center of development is z0 equals to 0. Or we can have series in this form z minus z0 to the power n from n equals to 0 to n. And then here we say that the series is centered at z0 different from the origin. That is when z0 is different from the origin. Or we can have series centered infinity, which we have here, where, in this case, I will not write this one, where the powers of Z are going to be all negative. So what is important also here is uh, being able to calculate the radius of convergence by the formula which is given there the limit of form uh, as the limit of a n over the following coefficient a n minus one and the absolute value as n is tending to infinity. And then what is what is important is also to be able to draw the regions of convergence. Now in our next presentation we're going to start from a given function f of z and try to see how we can represent, uh, develop, um, develop the power series expansion of the function whether centered at zero or centered at a particular point and so on. For now, this serves as an introduction to complex power series. Then let's meet in the next presentation where we are going to take take particular examples of developing power series expansion. For now, thank you for listening.